Atlanta. September 16th, 2016. Night falls on a Friday night here. Downtown. And I get ready for bed. The bag, the bottle, the notebooks. And hopefully not the security guard. This is a stall on uh, whatever floor this is on. And uh, it's quitting time, as you can see, or it's past quitting time. City is just about deserted except for the nightlife. We are across the street from the uh, federal building. And you can see it through the pillars and the fences there. A lot of space in this parking lot. And yet, if I have my druthers tonight, I'm going to be behind that parking stop. All this room, and I'm going to put myself behind that. Now, you may ask, why would anyone on a Friday night in a deserted, old, abandoned, for the most part, parking lot, would you stick yourself behind that parking stop when you have all this space in front of it that you could put, lay yourself down? Well, there was a Sunday night, late Sunday night, in, a, in, a, in an industrial park in Phoenix, Arizona, when I was homeless. And uh, it was about 10, 11 o'clock at night. And this was an industrial park. No, was, no one was in the place the entire weekend. Okay, there was no reason for anybody to be in the place at all for the entire weekend. So I kind of felt safe laying myself down in one of the stalls of this uh, industrial park parking lot. Thinking on a Sunday night at 11 o'clock, who in the world is going to be parking there? And it happened to be a disability spot, too. It wasn't just any old parking spot. It, I picked, like, a disability spot. In any case, I, I, I lay myself down in peace and comfort in both body and, I, I believed, in mind. Because I thought, hey, probably business is going to start up in this parking, you know, this, this industrial park, 7, 6, I'll be out of here by 4 o'clock in the morning, if that, if that late. So I felt comfortable and I laid myself down. I was awoken about, oh, about two, three hours later at about 1, 1 1.32 in the morning by this huge white F-150 towering over me. And thankfully, I jumped up. I, I screamed first as I, as I moved. And, and I screamed, and still the driver kept moving forward and kept moving forward. And I got out of the stall just in time uh, to save my life, but it, the, the car really bruised my left leg as I was uh, getting out of the stall. Now, I'm 55 years old, and, uh, you know, so I'm standing there, 
and my leg is like numb with pain. It is in pain. I'm thinking he broke it with with the uh, with the truck, and uh, you know he he once I I guess I appear in his windshield. He stopped the truck, and he gets out, and he says, as anyone would say, are you all right? And I say, no, you just ran over me, man. What are you doing here? What are you doing here, man? You just ran me over. He's there, well, I have some business here. I'm there, man, what business do you have at 2 o'clock in the morning here, man? He's there, well, you know, I know a friend over here that has an office in this, in this lot. I'm there, man, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. He's there, well, is there anything I can do for you? Now, how many times have homeless people heard this story? I said, yes, there is. I am badly hurt. Can you drive me to the emergency room of a hospital? I am hurt. I cannot walk. I am homeless. He's there, well, 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 I, well, hey, you know, I'd like to help you, but I can't. I, I got to go somewhere. I got to see somebody. And uh, no, I'm sorry. I can't help you. I'm there, man, I'm hurt, I can't move, you know, you, you, know you, you broke my leg. He said, well, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I can't, I gotta go. So he jumps up, back up into his truck, this huge, like, 10 foot high, pumped up, F-150, guns it, backs out, and I never see or hear of him again. This happened at 2 o'clock on a Monday morning after a weekend in an industrial park. 